Welcome to another edition of Talk City Greensboro, produced by GTN, featuring interviews and events happening around town. It's an easy way to stay in the know while you're on the go. Subscribe to Talk City on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, or SoundCloud so you can keep up with what's going on in Greensboro City Government. I'm your host, Josh Johnson, and as always, alongside me is my co-host and good friend, Mr. Devin Smith. Devin, how are you, buddy? Hey, how's it going? Good. Going good. Absolutely. Well, what's up, Greensboro? Before we get into this episode, I would like to express our appreciation for you listening to yet again another episode of Talk City. Our guest today is no stranger to the educational system here in Guilford County. We have the CEO and president of Say Yes Guilford, Miss Wendy Poteet. She's joined us to tell us all about this great nonprofit that has been hard at work for our children here in the area. How you doing? I'm doing well, Devin and Josh. Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming. Well, give us just a quick overview for people who may not have heard of Say Yes Guilford. What is it? What do you do? Okay. So Say Yes is an education nonprofit here in Greensboro, Mm -hmm. locally run nonprofit. And our mission is to provide support services and scholarships for the students in Guilford County Schools to make sure that they are prepared for success in college, career, and life. And we do that with the wraparound support services. And what we're really known for most, I think, in this community are the scholarship dollars that we provide to students in Guilford County. Absolutely. So now we're gearing up for seniors to graduate. Can they still apply for assistance? They can. So registration for Say Yes Guilford always opens on October 1st. So they still have until June 1st, which is always the deadline to apply for um, services. They also need to be applying for their FAFSA so that they can make sure that they get the federal um, application in for free aid, too. And do you help with that, that FAFSA, the FAFSA pro, uh, part of things, getting the applicants? Because sometimes it can be daunting. Not sometimes. It is a very... <laughs> Every a, single time. Every time. It is a really hard process. Um, so we do. So we have experts on staff, and we do a lot of FAFSA kind of FAFSA frenzy, FAFSA workshop type deals as part of our support services work. And parents and students can also call in. We have a capability to do one-on-one consultation. So we will. We have staff that can walk you through it line by line by line. I won't be one of those people, but my staff can definitely help you in that. <laughs> That's facet. awesome. I highly recommend that for anybody facing it. It's yeah. a it's a difficult it's a difficult yeah. piece yeah, of paper to fill is. out. It is definitely one that you have to pay attention to. <laughs> yeah. But it's so important that you do fill it out because it yeah. opens you up not just for the federal aid but all kinds of institutional absolutely aid and, yeah. all, and all kinds of different scholarship things. Absolutely, and so we'll come, kind of come back to to what the Say Yes mission is. But one thing that I did want to talk about was is a uh, communication effort that has been started by Say Yes, which is the, uh, I believe the overall thing is alumni for education. Oh, yeah. And then what kind of bridged off of that was athletes for education. Can you talk about that? Absolutely. So anybody that knows me knows that I am, um, I'm, a, I'm a basketball mom, football mom, you know, self-proclaimed. So I, I know a lot of the athletes in Guilford County, but one of the things we were trying to do was figure out how to engage our alumni, um, kids that had graduated from Guilford County schools, had been a part of Say Yes. And we started to look at all of the different folks that were across Guilford County. And we're like, we have some pretty interesting and amazing people that come out of Guilford County. So mm-hmm. we are partnering with these folks to talk about Guilford County and what it means to them, but also um, to talk about how important education is Mm -hmm. and how important it is to be philanthropic around organizations that do the things that Say Yes does for the community. Um, And you talked about the athletes part. We branched off and we're focusing on athletes first. So we'll do athletes. We'll do, you know, Fortune 500 guys and doctors and lawyers. We'll do all kinds of alumni. Um, But our very first blog was with Bam Adebayo, who is the power forward for the Miami Heat. So we interviewed him a couple of weeks after the finals of the NBA. NBA. And it's a Mm -hmm. really good blog post. You can find it on our website at sayyesguilford.org. And there's a lot of names that could be uh, inserted there, not (laughs) just Bam, but (laughs) uh, Keenan Allen. And there's a lot of people that that can champion that same uh, story coming out of Guilford County Schools. And you'd be amazed. We pulled together a list, you know, just working to kind of pull off a list. And I talked to my kids. Uh, One of my sons played in the NBA, and then I have one that's in college right now. And I said, put together a list of your friends and tell me where they are. 
we have over 100 names of kids that graduated from Guilford County Schools, and not just the NBA and football, but um, you got college athletes, NFL, NBA, WNBA, NASCAR, tennis. You have, you wow. know, writers and musicians and artists. So it's all kinds of alumni. And whenever we talk to them to try to get them scheduled, they are so excited about education and what that has meant for them to be where they are today. Absolutely. That's cool. So yeah. how did you get involved in this effort and why is it so important to you? So I have worked, I started my career here in Guilford County with the Chamber of Commerce here in Greensboro. Um, I branched my wings and I left and I worked for a health and human services agency in Raleigh and I landed in Forsyth County at the Winston-Salem Chamber of Commerce for probably 11 or 12 years. And I always did government affairs work, policy work, um, registered lobbyist. I say I'm a recovering lobbyist. Um, <laughs> but something that was shared with me when I first started doing lobbying work was the things that keep you awake at night um, are the things that you need to think about when it's time to change professions. And I never knew what that meant when it was said to me. Uh -huh. And when we were all dealing with the kind of the bathroom bill that came out of Charlotte, oh, you yeah. guys remember oh, that? Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, I couldn't sleep at night because we decided to ride the fence as an organization and not really take a stance. And oh. it came back to me. I, I need to find something that I'm really passionate about. And all the time that I was lobbying, education was always something that I was really passionate about. When I did my undergraduate work at Guilford College, I was part of um, the Justice and Policy Study Department there. And we did a lot of education work and a lot of research in education. It was always a thing that I kind of came back to as my passion. Mm -hmm. And although I would love to say I applied for this job and I wanted this job so bad, I did not. Um, <laughs> I, wasn't look, I wasn't looking for a job. Yeah. Um, a good friend of mine in Guilford County called and said, you know, Say Yes needs somebody to come here and see if we can get this thing moving in the right direction. And I'm like, I don't want to work for Say Yes. It's a mess. <laughs> um, and she, she kind of sold me on it. The headhunter probably called me 30 minutes later, and I went through the interview process. They did a national search for my position. Wow. Um, and they ended up finding me right in the backyard. I think what really sold me was the mission and the students that I'd be helping. But also my youngest kid, who's in 10th grade, said to me, Mom, how cool would it be for you to come and work where we live and actually help the kids that actually go to school with me? And yeah, yeah, it, yeah. it's good because I go in the nail salon now and a little girl said to me the other day, hey, you're the Say Yes Lady. And I'm like, yeah, I'm the Say Yes Lady. Where do you go to school? <laughs> Have you applied? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And so that's an interesting story. And so now that you've kind of gotten this experience and you hear, it seems like you really love what you do. Yeah. I do. I and do. I love it. Do you it. no longer stay up at night? I don't stay up at night wondering about what I should be doing. It, it doesn't keep me awake at night. Like I go to bed every night and my, my staff will probably tell you I gave them a disclaimer I'll send emails at all times of the night. If I'm thinking of something, I keep a notepad by my bed. If I dream about something, I'm going to write it down. Some kind of idea about how to move us forward and how to help the kids in Gilbert County. So I'm excited. I do love my job. I, this is where I plan to be. I told my staff the other day, this is where I want to retire from. So let's try to keep this thing moving in the right direction. Nice. Nice. Absolutely. Well, we already mentioned that Say Yes is a nonprofit, which means that you operate off of donors mm -hmm. and donations, right? right? So how can people donate and support the the efforts that your organization has been doing? We have a couple of different ways that folks can give. You can find all of those ways on our website, sayyesgilford.org again, um, and you hit the donate button. So people have the opportunity. We run an endowment um, that's held by Diversified Trust, um, and that endowment helps pay out the scholarship dollars that we give and we're constantly trying to grow that endowment because as much as we grow the endowment we can start to give out even more scholarships and open up that criteria for who's available to get the scholarships right mm -hmm. so we're always trying to grow that endowment as large as we can you also have the ability if you just want to give to scholarships that pay out immediately to students you have the ability to do that and then you also have the ability to give just a general support for the support services work that we do um, it's important to me because you know from the very beginning say yes you know, they raised a ton of money from the very yeah. inception of this organization mm -hmm. that kind of slowed down just a little bit. And, you know, my mindset around fundraising is we love our foundations. We love our large corporations and we want them to give. But we also want this to be a community wide initiative. We want folks that want to give twenty five dollars, five dollars, one hundred dollars. We want everybody to push this initiative forward. How great is it that you have a program that will pay tuition for kids trying to go on to college? Um, mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's yeah. very important. 
for us to, to focus on that fundraising piece. Okay. Can you talk about the students that have been impacted and will be impacted by the work that's being done at Sayas Guilford? Absolutely. So um, to date, I think since the inception of Sayas Guilford, our first graduating class just came out in the spring of 2020. So that's four years of a full cohort of students that we have been um, applying scholarships and awards to. With our public school model and our private school model, we have leveraged a little bit over 25 point $28.5 million and helped over 2,100 students um, to talk about impact from private schools to public schools. We've had a girl to graduate from Harvard this year who had her full tuition taken care of. So we have students yeah. all over the country. We, you know, we focus our dollars on our public schools right here in North Carolina. It's also for kids that are going on to community college that may be looking for certification. Um, so while we know that college is important, we know that not every student is going to get that four-year degree. Mm -hmm. So we are pushing our kids to think about career and technical education access as well. Um, and we also know, although people don't look at it that way, like when we're working on third grade reading, you guys may have heard, you know, from kindergarten to third grade, you're learning how to read. And then from third grade on, you're reading to learn. So if you're behind and not proficient in third grade, you're struggling throughout your academic journey. So yeah. we want to promote those types of things. Um, but everything that we do, we believe is workforce development for this county. So it's important for folks in this county to get behind us. And with COVID here, uh, you know, you won't see an impact on our students that are graduating this year because they're going on to college. But the learning loss that has taken place from these kids not being in a classroom setting for so long, you yeah. want to continue to give and support education right now as much as you can so that these kids are not suffering 10 years from now. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, that's a good point. Well, Wendy, thank you for so much for coming and sharing this information. Can you give us the website just to make sure everybody – gets it they know where to go to donate they know where to go to volunteer and everything i will ever all of our social media platforms and everything including our website is say yes guilford so our website say yes org. absolutely fantastic thank you guys thank you for being here stay tuned in weekly by subscribing to talk city greensboro on itunes stitcher and google play and don't forget you can download talk city from soundcloud that's it for this week thank you for tuning in to talk city be sure to watch gtn your official source for news and information from the city of greensboro gtn is available on spectrum channel 13 at&t uverse channel 99 and north state channel 31 gtn also streams live on roku and the city's website at greensboro-nc.gov have a good one take care